this week has been a ton of headlines and things going on. Not only did EXP get to have their earnings report for Q3 yesterday, which congratulations, you guys are doing an amazing job. You know, our profitability, our focus, our NPS. I mean, we're just, we're setting records across the board. But there were also some, some major headlines, if you saw Inman News or, or other things like that, with regard to uh, the commission's landscape. And so I want to address that head on with you, because more than anything here at EXP, we believe in the following. And we've been watching everything going on with the lawsuits and uh, fair trade very, very closely. And so I want to show you directly what we believe and feel with this slide right here. And as we continue to follow the formal complaints and the antitrust litigation, we're committing to upholding fair and transparent uh, practices. That's who we are. And we consistently seek to be compliant with the law. And we have already instituted mechanisms to help buyers and sellers negotiate commissions. We believe in the right to sellers doing the right thing, getting onto their next chapter. And more than anything, our agile business model allows us adjustments seamlessly and effectively across the nation. This is who we are and this is what we believe in. So going forward, let's talk about you in today's market. And this is where I'm so incredibly pumped. I wanted to have a couple of folks who are in it to win it day in and day out and bring them on to join me in kind of talking about the market. And so right now, I'd like to welcome two of my buddies, but also fantastic icon agents, Phil Sexton, Jeff Seabach, the Seabach team coming out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Gentlemen, how are you? You know Fantastic. What? I, fantastic. I, Thank you for I, having us, Holly. Look at you with the tie, like, oh, hello. yes. It, it, what is that Justin Timberlake song, Suit and Tie? That's now in my head. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can talk about me, but I'm going to flip it back to you because I got office envy. Your, your, <laughs> your background is on point today, Holly. I you know what? I, this is where I live. This is what I do. I love Michael Jordan in the corner. I got my um, dream team basketball cor uh, in the corner as well. And then, of course, I'm a big V-Dub fan, so that's my V-Dub thing. Right there, frame. Life is good. So, all right, let's talk about our agents. Let's talk about the market. We've had these headlines. I want to go beyond the headlines because everybody does that skim, right? That 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 headline skim, and it's like, I think I know what this means. I don't know what this means. How do I go now? <clears throat> so, what I appreciate about the way you all are leading your team over the course of the past years is you've been having honest conversations about working with buyers, especially in the market shift, right? We've got higher interest rates. We've got like tight inventory, right? So the professionals on your team are showing up. Can you educate me as to what are the things that you're talking about right now? What does it look like? Right now we're talking about dusting off and redefining uh, what we're going to offer to buyers because we know nice. that in the future, meaning tomorrow, today, that we're going to start to have to negotiate um, our own commission, that it will not be a guaranteed service and that you can get a little lax when you're guaranteed something versus now you're going to have to sign a contract every time you meet with a buyer. But good news is you do that already with every seller. So it's... Whoa, whoa wait. You're going to sign a contract every time you meet with a buyer. Is that realistic? Why would I, why would I sign a contract with you? What do you what do you do for me? Call him out. Call him out. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. come on, baby. Let's, let's uh, talk. Yes, yes. I mean, yes. you sound like. Do you think that when listing contracts first came about, people asked that same question? Yeah. What are, all you do is put a sign in the yard. As a buyer, yeah. you're just opening doors. What are you doing for me? I mean, the thing I like to focus on is the home search process because I know that many people have punted this during the process. We may have given this up. But I know that if I'm going to be negotiating my own commission, I want to talk about the service level, how I'm going to raise the service level to exceed their expectations beyond what they can do themselves. I mean, because most of our buyers and sellers that are buying houses are working. So it is your job to get out to find those off market properties to bring to them because that is something that they won't be able to find. OK, so you're, you're helping me with the search. But you know what? I can go on Zillow. Yeah, you know, that, that's that's accurate. You absolutely can go on Zillow. And there's a reason why our team was nominated as one of the most innovative real estate teams in America three years in a row, Holly. 
Oh, mic know, drop. Thanks. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you remember those, the, the stats there, but um, it's because we actually have a buyer marketing campaign and it's not something that you hear about often out there because people don't, have, they haven't had to dive in to the value that you bring to buyers the way that now with the landscape changing, we're going to see. And so if you go out there, you can see all these different classes on how to be a listing agent, how to take listings, how to do all of that. But what you don't see a lot of that I think we're going to, the uptick is coming is what's the, what's the buyer value? What's the buyer pitch? And it actually was a couple of years ago that we brought in, we invited an agent, an EXP agent to come into our team meeting to, because we knew that she had a buyer pitch that she was doing with her team. And we said, Hey, would you come in and share your buyer pitch with us as we're always trying to get better. We're always trying to get better at articulating our value. And one of the conversations that changed this week is that now I get to tell, I get to remind our agents that they're salespeople. And you used to get to just, you used to have to sell this. Now you get a chance to sell this. And let's embrace the opportunity to expand our skill set of what we're here to do. And that's help people move. All right. I, I love all of this. And so let's let's talk brass tacks because if I'm sitting in front of a buyer this afternoon and there's hundreds or thousands of agents in my marketplace that will just open a door and call it good and hope whatever may come through the MLS shows up in my bank account at the end of all of this. We know that that may be going away because on October 9th, NAR changed their rule that required any kind of offer of compensation in the MLS. Now, some of the MLSs are slowly changing that rule um, state to state, locality to locality. So as a result, you know, before it only had to be one dollar and the difference between zero and one dollar. Hundred pennies, pennies. Right. 100 pennies. So we were willing to work for 100 pennies the, before but zero now, I think, doesn't it make sense that if I'm sitting down with a buyer, I'm talking about, as you said, Jeff, I'm going to walk you through this search because it's easy to go on Zillow and it's like going to Amazon and thinking you're just going to buy a light bulb. How many light bulbs do you want? What that, what quantity, what, where, when, and why, like, what does it look like? And houses can be the same. What does it look like? How far? Yeah. Do you buy your car on the internet? No. I mean, it, the thing is, is this is 10 times more than that. I mean, the reality is, is yes, you can peruse on the internet, but are you not going to walk in the house, right? Like I'm going to walk in the house before you do to make sure that we're delivering you the best value. So I, I think I, I, got, yeah. I got something to add here, Holly. Sorry. Is it okay if we make it more? Just a dialogue? <laughs> Let's talk, man. Like, that's what we do. So I think that historically we have taken for granted the fact that we haven't had to describe or explain all of the things that go into what we do to help people buy houses. And let's just take a very simplistic one. And that is, you know, I happen to be working with a lender right now that doesn't require the buyer to pay for the appraisal up front. And if the house doesn't close, they don't have to pay for the appraisal at all. And so that could potentially be a thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars savings for my client. And in the past and historically, as soon as I meet somebody, if we're talking about financing, I can bring that up and just like it's nothing. Whereas now I got to build that into my value add that when I'm when I'm meeting with the buyers. And so you're building that relationship, right? Absolutely. You're you're building that relationship of this is how we do the things we do. You got to build a relationship. You also got to be able to pack the value in so that it's a no brainer that they want to work with you and that they're comfortable with what you're charging them. Okay. So I'm a brand new agent, right? Brand new agent got licensed this year. You should call what us. Do- <laughs> <Yeah. Marketplace>? <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. If, I, if I'm a brand new agent this year, I'm looking to get really, really specific on how I do this. And so Guys, when you're sitting with your team, how are you talking the difference between agency and employment? Because there's two different things there, right? You go agency, this is what I this is who I am as an agent, but employment, I'm going to work for you. I mean, to me, it's uh articulating the the different levels of service that you're you know, I mean, employment is um one that you get paid for agency is just more, is more representation. Yeah. Agency is kind of like how you show up. Go ahead, Jeff. Go Phil. 
No, I was just going to say, like, you're, I, I love your area of expertise, Holly. You come from being, like, the reason why we came to EXP is you were a designated broker at the time. You're the person that I still call when I got big questions. I mean, obviously, Kathy is a, is a huge value to us as well. But, you know, when it comes to how we're working and how we're representing our clients, our goal is how the golden rule, right? How do we want to be treated? If I was in the seat of buying a house, how would I want to be represented? How would I, what, what value would I think this agent is bringing so that I feel like I'm getting a good deal? I'm getting ultimate value because I can see the effort, the energy, and how they're protecting me in the service that they're providing. Oh, okay. So I love this. I loved where you went just there. Let's talk about protection. And what is my, what is your favorite way to protect a client in a deal? What, what is your favorite way to protect them? Wow. wow that's a yeah. stumper. Holy I don't know. Right. Okay. Oh, so let me tell you mine. My favorite is the contract. I know the contract better than anybody else. Oh. I was going to say, you know, having things in writing. But <laughs> yes, oh, I yeah. guess well, having things in writing, contract, all the things. So, so think of it this way. If I'm a brand new agent in this market, this is what I want you to focus on. I want you to know the contract better than anybody else. Because if you know it better than anybody else, you can take it to the higher level and protect your buyer and seller period. I don't care how long somebody has been in the business. If I know the contract inside and out, I will take you to the cleaners every time in a most beautiful way, because I know how to protect my client. Yes. Right. I know what addendums to use. I know the contingencies. I know how to rock and roll. Now let's talk about how we communicate with our buyers. I'm meeting with a buyer this afternoon. Do you have a script I can use with them? So uh, granted the fact that this was rolled out this week, our scripts are, you know, we're still working on this. So yeah. we have put together our buyer advantage and we've got 10 steps that we do to help the, the buyer in the transaction. And now we're rolling out our role play sessions. So historically, every week, Jeff Seabach teaches a listing class. And that is where we sit down and we go through all of the processes of having listings and taking listings and communicating with the client at the listing appointment. Next week, what are we doing instead? A buyer's class, a buyer's agency class, and yes. it, uh, how to expand your offering to um, <clears throat> be ready and prepared to negotiate your commission. I think at the end of the day is helping buyers understand. And, and what I love that, that you guys are making this pivot is it's not just about hiring me as your agent. It's about hiring me to protect you. Right? True. And, yes. and, and so when 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 you engage me in, in, in that employment agreement, right, it's beyond the agency. I'm going to do a buyer broker with you and we're going to talk about my fee for service and how that shows up. And it becomes really, really ma magical. And this is what I will say, because I know a lot of you out there in YouTube land and everything. And you're going, oh my gosh, this, this feels new. The good news is it's not. None of this is new. We've been working with buyers for for decades like this real estate for 100 years in the U.S., yeah, we've been doing these things. But when it comes to articulating to buyers, this is our new flex to take care of them at a higher level. But you guys are such strong listing agents. Let's pivot there because listings, sellers are reading the headlines too, right? And they're like, all right, so I don't have to pay a buyer's agent. How are you adjusting beyond the headlines this week? What does that look like? I mean, we were already explaining to them that they could offer any commission already. So it's just explaining that uh, and making it abundantly clear that they have a choice. But is that choice a good decision? Because we're looking at a pool of buyers, right? And if that do, do you, Mr. Seller, believe that if the pool of buyers shrinks, that you're still going to get the most money for your house? Because lots of agents work with friends and family and they have contracts. And I mean, it, I always like to make it relevant to the seller. It's, it's almost like a marriage, right? Like, I mean, would you um, buy a house that, you're, you're, that your wife didn't like, right? But the, the, the marriage between the agent and, and the buyer are so... Can I jump in? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I love that it's new, right? 
And so for us, we've always kind of offered a variable, a variable levels of menu of services, if you will, of for demand generation is what I like to say. So if we're able, depending on the pricing of the house, where the, where it fits in the pricing scale, who's our target buyer going to be? And is our target buyer going to be somebody that needs a, a loan program? Like, are we going to have a bigger pool of buyers if we are able to help pay their buyer, you know, their contractual obligated buyer commission. If so, you know, we got to have that conversation with them. And if that buyer pool can expand by offering buyer agents commissions, then it's not a far stretch to think that the more demand we can create for your property, then the higher the sales price. Yeah. Price yeah. You could get exactly. Yeah. With yeah. rising interest rates and prices at all time highs, buyers are tapped right? So any extra cost, if they have to pay it out of pocket, it may challenge them to make an offer on your house. And I don't know that that may be the buyer that's going to offer us, you know, 30 or 40% more than asking price. That may be our buyer. And since 97% of the home sales in Maricopa County are under a million, these people don't have the out-of-pocket costs, especially if we're looking for a VA buyer, right? Like they're coming in with no money down, right? Like they, they need help. They need assistance. And if you want to get top dollar, you're going to be a hell of to have the, the largest buyer pool possible. I, I, I love the reframing of who's the who's our buyer, right? Because those are conversations we've always had with sellers, right? Are you going to fix up your house? Where are you going to price? Uh, those types of things, but also recognizing who your buyer is and what they're doing to come to the table. Now, is it fair to say that the conversations we're having today with sellers are going to evolve? Yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, they kind of evolved all year, haven't they? And and buyers too. I mean, let, let's be real, Holly, all year <laughs> or our entire career? Well, like true story. Like, and <laughs> like, our real estate, has it always been the same until this week? No, I, I was going to say, I, I've been in it 25 years. I, I Every year I'm, or every three months, I'm like, oh, well, let's do that differently. Yes. It's okay. Right. We yes. were, I mean, just not long ago, we were explaining how it's going to be different selling your house during COVID, right? Like it, it, this is just the next evolution of where the market's going and the changes that you need to make to make sure you can kill it. Okay. So, so let's, let's talk about you know, with sellers, we're talking about who our buyer is, what the buyer pool is, what's appropriate, what feels right. Now, I got to ask, when you guys go in and you've got your menu of services and you're having the conversation with the seller, you're negotiating your fee first. Yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then you have the conversation about the buyer's agent fee. Right. Correct. And yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. But I mean, to me, I like to show them what is going on in the marketplace. Right. So I like to bring my computer with me and say, well, what are the other eight? What are the other sellers offering currently? Right. So it's I'm not asking you because only 50 out of 16,000 in our MLS are offering uh, less than 2 percent. Well, so this is the thing. Everybody makes their own their own number, right? I'm not going to dictate that number. EXP doesn't dictate that number. The seller is in control. They have always been in control. And that's what's so important about where we're at in today's market is the awareness of you determine what you want to sell your house for. You determine what repairs you want to take or do on your house. And if you're going to offer a buyer commission, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you're going to determine that. We're just here to give you all the information to make better choices. Is that fair? That's that's one hundred percent accurate. Yeah, it's interesting that you know we show them what's going on in the marketplace so that they can pick the price. One of our scripts that we use in the listing appointment is here's the range. This is where we see the top. This is where we see the middle. This is where we see the super aggressive that's going to get you offers right away. Which one would you like to go with? Yeah. And then we can look, and then obviously we have our menu of services to talk about what commission structure makes sense for them when it comes to the us, our side of the of the coin. But now we're going to have, I think, uh, uh, more reviews in, okay, here's what your competitors are offering to expand their buyer pool to the buyer agent's commission. Which one would you like to go with? Where would you like to be in this range in order to expand that pool? And let them pick that too. Absolutely. They, they always need to know, right? One of my favorite parts about being an agent is I am your trusted guide. I'm going to walk through this process with you. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to help you discern the tea leaves, right? 
I'm going to take yeah. the mystery out of it. So you and your family make really good choices. Now, one mm -hmm. of the things that I love that eXp has been so proactive on, and we just launched it at eXpCon, is eXp Exclusives. And if y'all haven't heard about this, eXp Exclusives is our in-house network that provides for agents across the U.S. and Canada right now to put their listings in. So if you've got a seller who's not quite ready to sell or, or get on the open market with MLS, uh, maybe they're testing the market to see if they can get a higher price. Gosh, why not go into eXp exclusive? Maybe they can't list their house on the open MLS because they can't let their boss know they're moving or they, you know, they've got kids at home, whatever it might be. We've got this here. And so what I appreciate about eXp exclusives, it's a private offering. It just promotes the listing to nothing but eXp uh, agents. So it's very much like walking into your old bricks and mortar office and being like, hey, I just listed 789 Peach Street. Anybody got a buyer? That's exactly this. We've just put technology behind it. Yeah, times now, 90, right. times 90,000. Times <laughs> 90,000, like things that don't hurt my feelings. So if you have not had an opportunity, this is going to be a really great way to leverage for both your buyers and your sellers. You can scan that QR code right now. And what it allows you to do is learn how to use uh, EXP exclusives. And, and this is powered by Zenlist, which is super awesome. It is um, very specific to EXP. It's only EXP. So what if I'm working with a buyer now, I can say, look, I can get access to off-market listings. I, that's one of the services I provide. Would that be of interest to you? And if it is, fantastic. Let's talk about my employment and how I work and, and how I take you not just finding the house, but contract to close because that's where two-thirds of everything goes sideways, right? I, so I, contract I, well, to close is important. Skip, I don't want to skip any of the level of services because we also we have a, a piece that we discuss the market. Right. Yes. Because that is the ever changing thing that it's hard for buyers and sellers to go to the news or go to their email to understand what's going on in the local market because it's really not told there. Right. So my value is helping to make sure that you build equity right from the start. But it's first understanding the market before we get into the contract. Would it be fair, Jeff, when I when I look at the market, real estate's personal. Right. I love knowing the bigger market because I'm a nerd for that. Right. Like you love the bigger market. Help me make good decisions. But at the end of the day, I know what my family needs. Like if, if somebody's having a baby, they need that extra bedroom. If somebody's moving uh, because of a job, they got to go. And so the market can dictate so much and frame how they do what's important to them. Right, like, yeah, yeah, okay. Like, I'm more page, into right? uh, neighborhood expertise. I, I'm more into understanding, um, you know, uh, the value of a five bedroom, two bath house that's not in a family neighborhood, like that's not surrounded by elementary schools, right? Like those types of things, those types of functional obsolescence that happen in our market are different than what happened in your market, Holly. Even though we're just an hour and a half away. For sure. And so, guys, what you're seeing right now between between this conversation with with the Jeff and Phil and myself, these market experts, these neighborhood like focus that everything that they do in giving people that that data and that information, that is the professional coming out and knocking it out of the park. And me, I'm that fluffy bunny where I'm going to wrap you up in love and bubble paper and I'm going to walk you through and be like, all right, let's talk about your family. And we're both doing it in the same way to help our people across the finish line. And that's what I want to empower you to do. Take a little bit of them, a little bit of me, and move it forward because it makes all the difference. Now, this is what I love is Rich Steffens is online. And shout out to Rich. Hey, man. Um, how as a buyer's agent do we assure this, that the seller is not still listing their home as if they are still paying both sides of the commission and pocketing the money? Great question. So let's talk about form and functionality. If you are out taking buyers out today, you're going to print out the MLS Plano, right? The MLS info sheet. And the, the, the agent side will have uh, offering for buyer broker commission. It could say zero. It could say $1. It could say whatever. Great. Keep a copy of that. If your buyers decide to make an offer on that property, when you make that offer, print out the MLS info sheet and see what the, the amount is. And if there's anything in there, 
you forward that at the same time. Because now, right now, the way the MLS rules work, if it's offered at time of listing or at time of a contract, guess who's getting paid? And that's why we go to the realtor organization. If you have questions, leverage your broker, all the things. Now, if you see a zero, this is where I want you to have a conversation with your buyer about how you show up way in advance of making an offer. Because see, when you're finally at offer time, guys, you're walking down the aisle, right? The, walking down the aisle is the worst time to sign a prenup. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Like, tell me I'm wrong. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm reading Rich's uh, verbiage there. And, and he is more of, is the listing agent going to charge a higher commission and keep that? I, don't I mean, care. That's, not, that's not something that we can be concerned with. I think I is what care. you're saying. I'm I just to... right. If I get, if I get the pleasure of selling one of your listings, whatever you have negotiated is totally on you guys. It's my job as a buyer's agent to negotiate my fee. Amen. Period. That's I what this is all about. Saying, I think the kids are saying, say it louder for the ones in the back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is the thing. You all negotiate your fee. I'm going to no go negotiate my fee. And you know what? Professionals forward. One thing, though, that you didn't mention that I think is important, Holly, is when you said, what if you see a zero? Oh, right? Yeah. What if you see a zero? Is it okay for me to call the listing agent and say, tell them a little bit of the story of my client and how they might need a, some assistance? And is it okay to ask if the seller would consider? Absolutely. And guys, we've already material? been doing this. Right. Anybody remember the short sale market? Some yeah. of you out there still are in counseling over it. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> right? And so we talked about it yesterday, just for the record. For sure. And so if you go back in time, like, yeah, we have the scars of the short sale market where things were cash poor. And sometimes we showed up and we said, hey, gosh, golly gee whiz, I have a buyer broker agreement that says this amount. Would you be willing to come up? And sometimes the seller or the bank would say, yes, we will or no, we won't, whatever it might be. Now, the other thing that is in your back pocket as a buyer's agent if you've got a signed buyer broker employment agreement, that's a fee for service. Contractually, you can have that as a concession on the contract. Let me say that again. If you write into the contract, dear seller, please credit buyer X amount, whatever it is, at close of escrow to satisfy buyer's contractual obligation with buyer's broker, it's a concession. It's no different than asking for loan costs. You guys good? Love it. Yeah. Right? Uh, this is, I The first time that I heard, it might have been you say this, uh, I don't know, 18, 24, however many months ago, was we had a sales meeting. We heard that language. And you know what? We had to go back a couple of times so that we could document that down, <laughs> add it to our common clause document that we share with our team members. Because that language is gold. That yeah. language is actually gold. So let's say it one more time. In the contract, you can say, now you've got to have a signed buyer broker employment agreement in order to make this work. But seller to credit buyer, whatever amount, X flat fee, at close of escrow to satisfy buyer's contractual agreement with buyer broker. That's it. And so when you look at how we negotiate going forward, there's lots of tools in our toolbox. The empowerment that we all have is to go beyond the headline and really have honest conversations with our sellers and our buyers about how we show up as professionals and what is it they need. They may choose an a la carte option, which is great. You may or may not offer that as a professional. But what I love, guys, is you have drilled down your 10 point, like how I show up kind of thing. Yeah. You know, your, your exclusive EXP exclusives, by the way, like that's one of six. Yeah. Ways we are going to go hunt for properties for these people. And one of the conversations that we have, because we do a lot of online lead generation. I said, Jeff, should we put, should we add a field on our form that says just browsing or house hunting? And depending on what the client says that they need, we can then talk about the six different ways that we go in, whether it's cancels, expires, fizzbos, et cetera, all of the things that we do in order to find properties that are not on the market yet for that client so that we can prepare them ahead of time for the conversation we're about to have with the ready form here in Arizona, 
right? With the employment agreement here in Arizona. Yeah. And so for, for my friends, uh, not in Arizona, the ready form is the real estate agency disclosure and election. I'm disclosing to you what agency means when you elect me. And then the buyer broker employment puts me to work for you. Right. We joked yesterday, right, Holly, that I think we're going to get that agency disclosure signed a lot more ahead of time. Hey, now. you know what? The commissioner says at first meeting, so I'm down with the commissioner. Right. <laughs> and so here's what I'm going to do for you. And then the one next to it says, and here's how I get paid for doing that. And I think yeah. that's and this is what you can expect from me, right? Like this yeah. is how we're going to work together. I love a framework for how we work together. Y'all wouldn't go put a sign in the yard at, without a signed listing agreement. Why would you put a buyer in your back seat without some sort of employment agreement of how you're going to work together? It's a dance. Know which and music you're dancing right to. Now, Holly, is <laughs> they get the practice and they still have offers right now that the commission is still included on MLS, meaning that you can get the agreement signed and still get the guaranteed commission now. So you get to get out and practice right away, right? So you can make all your mistakes and still get paid now. Right. Like, so get out there and try it immediately. Put this stuff in practice. You got to dust off those scripts. You can tell as I fumble through my words, even because we haven't articulated like we're, we're going to in the future. We had a contest earlier this year for the month of August. How many people can get who, who's going to be able to get the most number of buyer brokers signed, the most number of buyer broker agreements signed? When they're out there working with them. And so, as you know, I know that we're talking to a lot of team leaders out there in in addition to the solo agents. But that is a focus right now of how can we prepare all of our agents that we're working with to present that. And like he said, now's a good time to practice. You know what? Today. I, I that, That's the thing. I want to empower everybody out there that's watching as, as we're kind of wrapping up here together. Guys, go behind the headline. Whatever you saw in the headline, there's a heck of a lot more there. And, and coming from a putting my broker jobs hat back on, um, we are so committed at EXP to empower you, give you resources. So I know your broker state teams are rolling out a whole lot of great information. EXP University is doubling down on how we can build your business and help you during this time. But at the end of the day, one of my favorite things that I did with uh, my former business partner and we were in a team, we would take uh, and we would go Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, we would take our favorite form that we were both struggling with and we would practice over chips and salsa presenting the form. And then what we would do is we'd love to invite like a brand new agent to come hang out with us. And the brand new agent would smoke us every time. Right? <laughs> We've been in the business for, you know, 15, 20 years and they were like killing it. And so we would pick up stuff and then we'd invite a seasoned agent come, you know, like have taco Tuesday with us and like, Hey, we're going to just do some practice, you know, over chips and salsa. And it was amazing how much better we got at both listing and buyer agency and everything just by taking the time in an informal setting, mouthful of chips, making it better. So now, Jeff's right, guys. Now is the perfect time for tacos and script practice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Always. And sometimes Taco Tuesday has a margarita that could help with. You practice. know what? Hey, make good choices. That's all I'm going to say here. Yeah, Guys, I love spending time with you. I could do this all day or four days. We've just been given the woohoo. Thanks for playing. EXP Holly, Realty. I got to say, I hope to see you on November 9th at our regional rally in Chandler. Man, I cannot wait to be there. Chandler coming in hot. I'm going to be in San Diego on Tuesday. And then I can't wait to be in LA in a couple of weeks at your regional rally. It's going to be amazing. Jeff, Phil, as always, love you guys. Be good. Thank you, big, big love.